Hi, I'm Jim Schultz. Welcome to Know the Composer. This will be just the new series on this channel, which um, I hope to inform you about Brazilian composers, classical music history, and a few other subjects. In today's video, I'll talk about Camargo Guarnieri, which is just one of the greatest classical musicians of all time here in Brazil. Um, he's just a big name, he was widely recognized um, throughout the world. And it's very important that people get to know Guarnieri because he was such a big deal and now he's kind of forgotten. And I just don't think that's right, let's try to change that. Mozart Camargo Guarnieri was born in 1st February of 1907 here in São Paulo. It's actually a smaller city called Tietê. His full name was Mozart Camargo Guarnieri. And a few curiosities about his name, he's, um, he's called Mozart because his father was a great um, fan of opera, so he decided to name him as Mozart. Guarnieri is actually from the same lineage of Guarneri, the, the legendary violin maker, but um, due to a mistake in the immigration department here in Brazil, when part of his family moved here, um, they actually added uh, an extra I, and that's why he's called Guarnieri. When he was actually seven years old, he started having some theory lessons with a clarinetist um, there in Chieti. And the thing is, um, he didn't really care about the lessons, he actually hated them. For that reason, his family actually decided to change the strategy and his mother um, started teaching him the piano. He would study many hours a day, but the thing is, um, he wouldn't always study, he would mostly improvise. That's um, actually how he developed a very particular style and a more, a very strong sense of direction and um, of how things should evolve over time. In 1920s, when he was um, 13 years old, he actually wrote his first piece called Sonho de Artista, which is basically like a um, dream of an, of an artist. It was very well received by people from Tietê and he was able to actually publish it in Sao Paulo and he got just many many articles written on paper congratulating him from, for this great work and let's just remember he was 13 years old um, that was very um, amazing so unfortunately I couldn't just find this, uh, this piece anywhere um, and this is actually a problem with many of Guarnieri's works you just can't find them, um, they are sometimes um, not performed at all, they are vanished Many of the sheets are just um, barely readable and, I mean, uh, we've lost a lot of stuff from him, so that's a problem. Um, well, quick correction here, I'm editing the video and I just realized that there's something that's wrong. Um, and it's not that we lost um, many of his works, but there are, there are many works that aren't really performed anymore, that are kind of forgotten, and there are works that um, weren't recovered yet. And um, there, there are actually a few um, programs that are recovering it and a, a few programs that recovered some of his um, works. But the thing is, um, the majority of his works are just uh, forgotten. And that's kind of how it is, the sad truth. So, In 1922, um, his family moved to Sao Paulo so that um, Mozart Camargo Guarnieri could actually study music um, more in depth because he was just already at the level of every professor um, back in Tietê. So they moved there and he, as he was um, old enough, he was about um, 16 or 15 years old, his family thought that he should start working to actually help the family. Then he just entered in this um, very, very rigorous and full um, schedule in which he would work on a music store, on the ar archives, just organizing the sheets and playing the sheets for whoever um, wanted to buy the music and was trying to decide on which sheets um, he, would, he would actually play and for that reason he acquired just a huge repertoire because he would um, read music almost all day long at night he would actually play the piano on a theater here in Brazil and later, at night even, he would actually play on a cabaret In 1926 a great Italian maestro came to Brazil and he was, um, he was called Lamberto Baldi and um, in the first concerts that he performed here in Brazil Guarnieri came to his dressing room and asked for lessons Baldi was very impressed with the composer's works and he never even charged anything for the lessons 
Then he immediately included Guarnieri in the orchestra, which um, just gave him um, tons of experience playing as a pianist. And in this next year, he would actually enter in a very, very tough studying schedule because he would study all day and he would play at the orchestra. Then he would actually have dinner with the maestro and at night he would have lessons. So he would be playing all day, um, a small pause and then lessons. So through these lessons, he would actually um, get in touch with many composers that were um, huge in Europe at the time. For example, Stravinsky. Uh, and, and many others, um, Hindemith, Schoenberg, and that's because um, the maestro brought many of the sheets to Brazil and the Latin America premieres um, of all those pieces were, uh, many of them were being conducted by Baldi and Guarnieri had just this first contact with many new influences which would just um, change him for the rest of his life. In 1928, Guarnieri met a very special and important person in his life, which was Mario de Andrade. Mario de Andrade is actually one of the greatest poets here in Brazil, from all times. And the thing is, um, he was very influential at the time, and he was the leader of the nationalist, modernist movement here in Brazil, so he was very, very influential. Mario actually loved Guarnieri's pieces and he saw something that was extremely Brazilian in its essence and as he was one of the main figures of the nationalistic movement at the time he actually um, thought it was incredible that Guarnieri was able to just use all those influences and merge them into a very concise um, product and music so for that reason, he decided to teach um, Guarnieri about the Brazilian culture. He would teach about aesthetics and not only the Brazilian culture, but uh, European culture in general. Equally importantly, um, Mario de Andrade would actually um, talk about Guarnieri, this young new composer in the papers, and he would gain um, tons of prominence. So. In 1930s, um, Guarnieri actually got a scholarship to study in Europe and he didn't go. Uh, because of political reasons, um, the committee that actually gave him the scholarship was closed and he just didn't receive the scholarship at all. As I said, uh, Mario de Andrade was extremely influential, so in 1935 he actually convinced the president to open a department of the culture in which uh, Guarnieri would lead the choir. And that's how Guarnieri actually um, started his professional life um, for good, because he would actually have many more resources to work with. Also in that year, 1935, some of his pieces were actually included in a recital in the National Institute of Music of Rio de Janeiro. And the thing is, after that, um, many critics um, started considering him just one of the big names of Brazilian classical music and that was kind of a turning point for him and although he already had some recognition there was a point in which he really started um, being taken seriously and not only that he was um, recognized as being just a big deal in Brazilian classical music. Then, in 1936, um, Alfred Cortot, which was a, a French pianist, a very known French pianist at the time, he um, came to a tour um, through um, Latin America and he heard um, Guarnieri's pieces in, here in Sao Paulo and he was extremely impressed. Once he was back in Paris, um, he wrote a letter directly to the governor of Sao Paulo saying that Guarnieri was just one of the greatest names um, at the time in classical music in the world, which is just a big deal. And if the government were actually to hand those scholarships to Brazilian composers to study in Europe, um, one of these scholarships wouldn't be in better hands than Guarnieri's. So um, for that reason, he actually got a scholarship to study in, in Europe and he was actually able to go to Europe because, as I said the last time, he, he got a scholarship. Um, the committee that gave him the, this opportunity was closed and this time um, he had the chance of actually going to Europe. Well, um, with that scholarship, um, Guarnieri went to Paris. He was just extremely recognized. Um, he had the chance to conduct um, a few concertos in Paris. Also, uh, many of his works were premiered there, and um, not only premiered, but they were um, performed, um, works that were um, already kind of established. 
and this um, game gave him just a, a wider recognition in the world because more people um, started knowing him and everybody that came in touch with him was just extremely impressed with um, what what he actually composed so unfortunately in 1939 he had to come back to brazil because um, of the events of the world war ii and when he got here he didn't have money because he had gave, given up his uh, role as a conductor of the, the choir um, he wasn't teaching in any conservatoires he didn't have any students and money became just a really big problem for him which he just had to to deal with it and slowly build up his um, career here here in brazil once again well the next years in his career um, here in brazil were extremely prosperous not in financial ways um, money was always a, a problem for him however um, it was prosperous in the sense that he just started to get widely recognized in brazil and in the rest of the world as one of the greatest composers um, of uh, Brazilian culture. So um, he won many prizes, he just was recognized um, by many entities and countries as being uh, an in incredible contributor to um, culture in general. And for that reason, I won't speak um, specifically about what happened in those years, but I'll list everything that happened in the description. If you're interested, you can just see um, what prizes he, he earned um, who recognize him as being great musicians, it's just a lot of stuff and I'll list everything below, so if you're interested, don't forget to check it out. In 1975, um, another important event actually happened in Guarnieri's life and uh, the University of Sao Paulo, USP, um, founded its symphony orchestra, the OSUSP, which stands for Som uh, University of Sao Paulo Symphony Orchestra. And the orchestra was almost completely handled um, to Guarnieri because at the time he was um, known as the probably the most important name in Brazilian um, classical music because I mean he he was just extremely well recognized um, throughout the world and until the rest of his life he actually premiered many of his concertos and entered a very intense schedule of um, recitals, concertos, and many performances in general with Ozuspi. And if you ever um, come to Brazil, um, São Paulo more specifically, um, you can watch Ozuspi to this day. Um, of course, it's not being led anymore by Guarnieri, but um, it's just a great orchestra to watch um, to this day. Due to his age and health issues, um, Guarnieri passed away in 1993. To put in perspective um, how much of a big deal he was, um, he pretty much um, earned first place on every competition he uh, participated. On top of that, um, he got many um, almost random uh, prizes and recognitions around the world from different countries, some cities, even in Italy, in these um, many countries of South America as being just a great contributor to culture and he would just visit a, a city and he would get a prize because that city or that place recognized he was just a great musician. And you can actually find some of those in the description, so as I've said, um, if you're interested, check it out. Also in the description, I've uh, made a small selection of some of his works. If you want to start listening to Guarnieri, I just recommend listening to his Ponteios, which are 50 small uh, piano pieces, which are just incredible. They were composed in basically 30 years, it's a big range of... Um, of pieces. It just shows how versatile uh, Guarnieri was. It just shows how he actually could handle almost every influence he would be presented with. And the thing is, it shows various periods of Guarnieri's. If you listen to the first pieces, they are very different from the last ones because they are simply 30 years apart. Also, I put a link to his piano estudos, which means studies. And um, some of these studies actually um, inspired me to write my aggressive piece, which is a piano study also. And if you listen to my piece, you may be interested in listening to what inspired it and where did I actually get some of the uh, material and inspiration to write that piece. Um, I also listed the Dança Brasileira, uh, which means uh, Brazilian dance which um, was initially a piece for piano but then was arranged for a big orchestra and 
It's very colorful, it's very joyful, and some of it actually inspired um, the second movement of my Sonata for Oboe and Piano, which, um, I mean, I, I think it's quite recognizable in the themes, the, um, the inspiration, so. Another one of his pieces that I've listed down below is his second symphony called Wirapuru, which is the name of a bird. It is beautiful, it's incredible, and also you can see uh, very direct influences from European classical music from the 20th century. Uh, I won't relate it directly to some pieces, but I think that if you know some of um, 20th century classical music, you surely recognize um, where did he take some of his ideas. It's important to note that every information I took um, to actually make this video was taken from this book, which is just this huge um, work on Guarnieri's life. Um, I don't know if you can find it in English, but um, I mean, this is in Portuguese and I'll link where you can buy it in Amazon. And I mean, it's in Portuguese, so I don't know if it's of any help, but it's just an amazing book. Um, in the beginning, it just has this um, very nice biography of Guarnieri, um, which isn't huge. It is just a small biography, but um, it also contains every one of of his works and a small analysis of many of them. And some of his works actually contain a more in-depth analysis um, of the pieces. So it's a very, very interesting book. And although I haven't read it all because um, there's a lot of analysis of the works, it's just a great book to understand um, the context in which he wrote all, all of those pieces. So. Okay, so that was the video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you actually enjoyed it and you learned something new today. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. It will really help me know that you are actually enjoying these videos and I'll keep doing more. Also, if you really enjoyed it and want to receive more and know about music history here from Brazil, about the music scene today, if you want to learn about this stuff, don't forget to subscribe because I'll post a lot more about this. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. Cheers!